Peculiar. Hello there, greetings, I'm Aaron, and this is Camp Peculiar, a channel for visual storytellers who are interested in using AI art to support their webcomics, their graphic novels, comic books, and even animated comics. My voice cracked a little bit there, I wonder why that happened. <laughs> Let's talk about tools. That means the buttons that I press, uh, usually in Photoshop, specifically for Photoshop in this video, every time I make a comic for Camp Peculiar, which is an A, I said it weird, Peculiar, an AI art comic series, which I art, prompt, direct, and write. You can find it over on Webtoons by clicking on the link in the description below. Does it have to be Shoto, Shotofop? Does it have to be Shotofop for this? No, it doesn't. It can't be Shotofop. It has to be Photoshop. I mean, if you're asking the question, do you have to use Photoshop to get any use out of this video? Short answer is yes. I mean, the principles will probably apply to other programs, but yeah, it, it's going to be real helpful if you have Photoshop. All right, let's get going prepping our AI generated artwork for our comic strip, our web comic, comic book, whatever it is you're working on. All right, so number one. With Stable Diffusion, uh, which you can get a Photoshop plugin for, I think the max size on that is 1024. And with Mid Journey, you're looking at about the 2048, which is plenty big for a, like a Webtoons comic. It's plenty big for a lot of stuff, maybe not print, especially considering with Comixology, the Am Amazon service, I think their minimum size is 1800 or something like that. So what if you wanna focus in on a particular part of an image, or if Mid Journey does that fun thing where it puts the image that you love, like it's like, wow, that's the best image that I've seen generated all day. But Mid Journey puts it on a piece of paper, which is then on a desk, which is then inside of a notebook. And you're like, man, there is a lot of wasted space. I know there's prompt words you can put in there. You can leave them all your tips in the comments below. I know there's words you can put in there to uh, minimize that process. But what if you just need to make the image bigger? What if you simply are in on the relax mode and you can't upscale or something like that. So inside Photoshop, they have these AI-ish uh, filters called neural filters, and one of them is the super zoom. And so occasionally I like to use that to select a low res image like this and upscale it to something bigger. So in Photoshop, you have your document that you want to upscale and you're gonna go over to filter and then choose neural filters. If you don't have super zoom downloaded, you can click the little cloud icon and it will download. It's about 200 megabytes or so. It'll download for you and then you just switch it on there or toggle it on and you have a couple of options. And the first option I'd like you to look at is actually all the way down at the bottom where you can send this upsized image to a new layer in your current document or you can send it to a new document, which is what we'll pick right now. It's kind of safer to have it on its own document because it's not gonna make your image size any bigger. It's just gonna put that larger image on a new layer in your very small document size. Next thing you wanna look at is the plus uh, magnifying glass up here. And you'll see right now we're at one X, we're not zooming, so we'll hit that, we're at twice the size, now three times the size. And then you can fiddle around with these sliders right here to reduce noise and sharpen. Another helpful thing to do is to select the magnifying glass all the way over on the left and zoom into your image so that you can kind of in real time see what the slider changes, what effect they're having on your image. Keep in mind that super zoom, super zoom, is that really the best name for that? I don't know. Keep in mind that the wonderfully titled uh, super zoom, uh, I think was meant more for portraits or people's faces. I use it on all sorts of AI generated stuff. And the settings I like to use are enhance image details on, but remove JPEG artifacts off because it does some smoothing uh, there, which I don't need. Uh, noise reduction all the way at zero, again, because it smooths too much and sharpen, you know, up pretty high, whatever you feel comfortable with. You can see the preview there. And when you're all done, when it's all done processing on the device there, which you'll see in the lower left-hand corner, you can just hit okay. And Photoshop will put that on a new layer for you. So there you go. Time to move on to number two, which is a, a critical skill. Number two is super important because when you're doing comics with AI art, it's very helpful to separate the subject from the background. So here we have a little uh, robot vacuum cleaner unicycle guy. And if you go over here and select the magic wand tool and then just hit select subject, Photoshop will go ahead and pick out the subject for you. You can just copy that off there. You can notice that it got the inside of the tricycle there. To get a finer level of sort of sampling, you can go up to the drop down arrow, choose cloud, and then hit select subject again, and you'll try to do a little better job. It's like, I'm sorry I didn't do a good job. I'm gonna do a try, try to do a better job for you. And there you go, it got the inside of the unicycle. 
the third tool I use on every comic strip and the most important or the most frequently used. It's the big one. I don't know why I put it in the middle. It's because I'm a storyteller, not a list maker. And so this is like where the rising action happens. Like the plot's really getting getting good here in the third act. Uh, and so this is, this is a really important tip. Uh, and that is content aware fill. And I use this in all sorts of different situations. So let's start off with a simple example of content aware fill, and that is that I just don't want the button on this guy's jacket. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the lasso tool. Feathering does work with the content aware fill, so just keep in mind at zero feather, you'll have a hard edge, and at like 10, it'll be a pretty soft, mushy edge. So I'll keep it here at like one or two. Circle this button right here, the minimum area that I can sample there, and then hit edit, content aware fill. There's a bunch of different options in here. So you can see what it's gonna to do to the button there using the auto setting, it's going to remove it. And then this green area that's highlighted, at least I think that's green, is where it's going to sample the fill details from, which is very important. The only thing I have set that you might not have set on yours is I'm outputting mine to the same layer that I am on versus outputting it to a new layer, which I believe is the default setting. So we'll go ahead and hit okay on that. You can see the button has been removed. Let's look at another example of this. You can see in this panel, I need to use the crop feature here to get rid of these cars at the bottom because it doesn't make any sense. And there we go. And now I don't have enough room for text. I don't have any room for comic text above this guy. So I actually need to extend the canvas uh, in order to do that. But the canvas now looks terrible because this wonderful little like crayon-y sort of watercolory background doesn't uh, extend all the way. And content fill is a great way to do that as well. So what I'll do is go ahead and merge down these layers together so that I have that gray area on the same layer so I have something to actually fill. And I'll go ahead and select that and I'll hit edit, content aware fill. And I don't think the smart, well, the smart one got it. So the smart one sample was smart enough to sample around the character. So then we hit okay and we have enough room to put a little comic uh, bubble above him. Okay, onto a little more complicated example of the content aware fill. We have a bunch of branches and things that need to be removed. I mean, it's like a windy day, but there's a bunch of stuff I'd like to remove just to clean up this background. And so we'll go ahead and just start by making little selections here and then hitting edit content aware fill and leaving it on auto. And we can see it looks like it's doing a pretty good job of that. So this is a good example of where auto is not working well. It's just sampling the whole image and it's getting the lighter clouds, which we don't want. We only want it to sample from this gray area over here on the right. So we'll select custom and then we'll just paint in the brush sizing works just fine in here. And we'll start to paint in the area that is okay for it to sample from, which is none of the cloud bits, maybe just a hair, but mostly just this darker area. But we have a cleaner image here other than the fact that there's something weird going on right here, but that should be pretty easy to remove. So that is content aware fill, which means we're on number four, which is the puppet warp. The puppet warp tool is something I use a lot to get different uh, body positions, even facial expressions using the same image. I'll do a whole video on that as well. Let me show you an example of the Puppet Warp tool and how I use it. And we get to use some things we've already learned in this video. We'll go ahead and select the magic wand, hit select subject. Maybe we'll put it on cloud so we can get the whole unicycle. Hit select subject. We'll go ahead and copy that and put it onto its own layer because we want the Puppet Warp to be applied just to specific parts of an image, not the whole thing or else it'll be trying to warp the background and all sorts of other things. So you really do want the thing that you want to warp and change and try to repose on its own layer which means that we have this background with nothing on it. So we will go ahead and use our old fan content aware fill. And now we have a pretty clean background just using content aware fill really quickly. And we can go ahead and turn back on our thing that we want to warp. I think it took out most of the ground, which we would have to go in and fix, but that's okay. So to get to the puppet warp, you just select the layer that has the thing you want to repose on it. And you go up to, you go up to edit puppet warp. Now, the way this works is you put little pins on the area of this mesh that was overlaid on the top of your image of where you would like to kind of pull and deform it. But it needs some sort of anchor pin. So we'll put one here at the bottom and then just sort of think like bones, even though these aren't really bones. And we'll just sort of move up here, put one there, the elbow, the hand, maybe at the neck, top of the head, top of this little thing here. And then we'll also put an anchor one on this little Roomba vacuum cleaning thing there and there. Okay, and then now we can go ahead and change, re change the position of the head, 
We can make this like he's going really fast or that he's come to a stop. Repose this arm into sort of a different position and even change the posture uh, of the pose a little bit. So that's the puppet warp tool that you can use on all sorts of things to get slightly different poses, facial expressions, or just to fix little alignment problems. We're on to number five. I talk about it all the time. Clipping masks. Clipping masks. They're ways of creating safe little containers, safe little beds, safe little cuddly nooks for your image parts. So I got two fantastic ways to use clipping masks. I'm going to show you the least exciting one first. Uh, and that would be to just draw out the panels of your uh, comic using a clipping mask. So it doesn't matter what color the fill is. We'll just change ours to whatever color that happens to be and turn the stroke on so it's easy to fill. And you've seen me do this a bunch of times. We'll go get uh, any image. Let's just go get an image. Let's just go get this one. And if we want that to be in our panel, right now we would have to cut it and size it, and that would destroy it or be just what we call destructive editing. To do non-destructive editing, we would just put the thing we want to be masked above the mask itself or the thing that's going to be its little cozy bed for it to live underneath. And then we right click on the thing we want to be masked, not on the mask itself or the thing that you would think is doing the masking. We click on the thing above it, the thing we want to be masked and choose create clipping mask. That looks at the layer directly above it. It puts this little arrow there and it says, oh, that's this little cozy area that it wants to live in and it's not gonna go outside of that cozy little area. And then you can go ahead and move that image around inside of there safely. So that's one use for it, but I like it for doing some photo bashing and photo extensions as well. And so the way that works is, let's say I have these rocks and I wanna make them extend all the way up out of the photo. I could do that with a series of content fills and clone stamping and stuff like that, or I can use a clipping mask. And the way I would do that is create a new layer and then just start drawing out the column shapes using a lasso selection. So now you have these just sort of selections drawn out for how you would like the columns to go up. We just need to fill those with black on their own layer. And then we're gonna put another layer on top of that. And that is gonna become our clipping mask. And the art that we're gonna put on that is whatever stonework we would want to fill that. So you just make a kind of random selection of stonework and make sure you're on the layer that has the stonework. And so that's like one bit of stone that we're gonna to use to fill there, so we'll put that. It'd be really great to sample this one here, but there's this like glowing dot in the middle of that, so we can use Content Aware Fill to just circle that and hit Content Aware Fill, make sure it's on auto, and hit OK. Now we can go ahead and sample this whole bit of stone, this nice big slab right here, and we will copy that. And so you can start co combining those together, or you can just use one piece of stone uh, like that, but you're going to want to put whatever it is you want to fill those those dark areas with above it, just like you would with a clipping mask. Right click on that, right click on that, right click on that, and create clipping mask. Uh, and then you can hit Command or Control T to see it. And then you want to just you can just start duplicating that a bunch of times and filling in uh, how it would make sense to you. It's just a really quick way to uh, photo bash. Clipping masks, a great way to draw panels and a great way to fill in details from an AI generated image that you just needed a little bit more from. All right, that was five tools that I use on every Camp Peculiar comic strip. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. If you like visual storytelling, comics, animation, storyboarding, and want to use AI art to create your stories, well, that's what we do on this channel. Like and subscribe. And you know what? Say hi in the comments below. Let me know if you're working on something. I would love to hear about it. And I will see you on the next video.